I am here with my favorite mug, Bah Humbug, to spill some tea. Hey guys, how's it going? Today's video is going to be a very serious topic. I'm going to be talking about why A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens needs to be a banned book. Everybody knows the story of A Christmas Carol, but in case you don't, it's essentially the story of a man named Ebenezer Scrooge who gets bullied in the middle of the night by ghosts. I think that this story is harmful to children, teaches them horrible lessons, and is just very, very bad, and nobody should be reading this book or following its example. So in today's video, I'm going to be explaining why. Obviously, this is unbiased and I'm just going off the source material here. So I'm just going to, you know, cite all my sources. First, let's start with Ebenezer Scrooge as a character. We all know he's a grumpy old man who works really hard, has very strong work ethic. It says here on page four, Scrooge, a squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, convetuous old sinner. Hard and sharp as flint, from which no steel had ever struck out generous fire, secret and self-contained, and solitary as an oyster. I mean, same. So right away, we learn that Scrooge is just a naturally grumpy person. He doesn't like being surrounded by people. That's his personality, and that's who he is. Instead of just accepting who he is, though, they get ghosts to bully him into changing. Scrooge is happiest when he's left alone. Here in page five, when they're talking about how people don't often go up and start conversations with him, but what did Scrooge care? It was the very thing he liked. To edge his way along the crowded paths of life, warning all human sympathy to keep its distance, was what the knowing ones called nuts to Scrooge. So he likes being on his own. He's an introvert. I think a lot of us here on AuthorTube and BookTube can relate to being introverts. How would you feel if somebody dragged you out of your bed in the middle of the night and forced you to socialize? The other thing about Scrooge is that he doesn't like Christmas. And honestly, neither do I. I am not a Christmas person. I really enjoy spending time with my family, but that's what Boxing Day is for to me. I have really bad gift giving anxiety. So all of that aspect of Christmas, of receiving gifts and giving gifts is really, really stressful for me to be completely honest. And I just don't enjoy Christmas. I hate Christmas music. Red and green are my least favorite color combination, like legitimately. I just really don't enjoy Christmas. And Scrooge is the same way. I can respect that. What's Christmas time to you but a time for paying bills without money? A time for finding yourself a year older and not an hour richer? And then he goes on along those same lines. So he doesn't like Christmas. We don't all have to like every holiday, but apparently it's illegal not to like Christmas. But even though he hates Christmas, he doesn't stop other people from celebrating. He agrees to give Bob Cratchit the day off. He even tells his nephew Fred, keep Christmas in your own way and let me keep it in mine. So he's not going out there and being a Grinch and trying to cancel Christmas. He just wants to be left alone. Reasonable. The last thing we need to talk about to really understand Scrooge as a person is that he is really financially motivated and he highly values his work ethic and his finances. And I think that's completely legitimate. I think that a lot of people unjustly criticize and villainize people who are really financially motivated. I think that we just put this big emphasis on greed when it comes to money, when it really it's a sense of security. I bought my own house at 25 years old, completely alone, because I'm a financially minded person, because I am very strict with myself, because I work really hard and save my money. I'm not a bad person because of that. Scrooge is much the same way, but for some reason, he's the villain because of it. I don't think that Scrooge being just naturally motivated by money makes him an automatic villain and a shitty person. I think that aside from the ghosts, the true villains of the story are the two gentlemen that walk into Scrooge's counting house trying to collect donations. First of all, clearly they're terrible at their job because they walk in and they ask if they're addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley. Jacob Marley's been dead for seven years, so you just walk into this place uninvited, see somebody who you think is the owner, and bring up his dead business partner and best friend. When Scrooge tells them that Jacob Marley has been dead for seven years, their response isn't to offer condolences or to apologize. They say, and I quote, we have no doubt his liberality is well represented by a surviving partner. That is just really cold and really rude and disrespectful. Talking about disrespectful, 
they come in and give the little spiel about they're collecting money, blah, blah, blah. And then they say, what shall I put you down for? They just assume he's going to make a donation, which I think is really rude. And then Scrooge says, nothing. He doesn't throw a big fit. Nothing, Scrooge replied. I think that's a very fair answer. The men, however, reply, oh, you wish to be anonymous? They ask him, how much do you want to donate? Not, do you want to donate? He says he doesn't want to donate, and they ask if he wants to donate anonymously. No! And then he tells them, I wish to be left alone. This is actually a huge pet peeve of mine that I do want to mention. As somebody who had a decent savings account for most of my life, like I said, I've been saving up for my house since I was 15 years old. I always worked full time. I was only making minimum wage, but I put all of my money that I could into my savings so I could afford a house because that was my biggest dream. I wanted to own a house. I wanted to have somewhere to live that was mine and have that security and know there's always a roof over my head. Like that's always been my life stream. And I knew that as someone that's always worked for minimum wage, I wouldn't be able to get a big mortgage loan because I don't make that much money. So I knew that I was gonna have to have a pretty big down payment. So that's what I did. I saved, I budgeted, I worked my ass off and I was able to buy the house. For full transparency, I had $35,000 saved up when I bought my house. I put 30,000 as a down payment. Now, I never really told people how much money I had in the bank because first of all, it's no one's business and it just feels like bragging when you talk about how much money you have in the bank when it's a sizable amount. Now, like I said, I worked my ass off. I didn't get gifts or loans. I worked minimum wage. I paid my own rent. I lived alone for a lot of that. Like, I worked really hard and that was my hard-earned money. But every now and then, when people found out that I had a decent amount of money in the bank, they would just assume that I would just give it to them or lend them money. And that's not my responsibility. Like, I do donate to charities quite often. Like, I, I really like donating to charity. When I was like six years old, I gathered up all the loose change in my bedroom, which was probably only like 20 bucks, but it was my all of the money I owned. And I asked my dad if he could donate it to the IWK Children's Hospital for me. And they actually, they mailed me back some stickers and a little thank you note, which was super cute. But anyway, I am somebody who enjoys donating to charities when I can, but it's not my responsibility to donate to charities. Just because I have money does not make me obligated to spend it. I worked hard for my money and I can choose what I do with it. And I think everybody has that right. Scrooge is not somebody who just accumulated money without hard work. He worked his ass off. He grew up poor and he worked really, really freaking hard for his money and he got it all fairly. It's not like he stole his money. It's not like he broke any rules or laws. It's not like he just inherited the money and decided to be greedy with it. He worked hard for his money and I believe that he has the right to do with it what he wants. So while I do think that it's a nice thing to do to donate money, it's not a social obligation to give away your money that you worked hard on. And that's just my two cents. People might get mad at that. I'm sorry, but that's my opinion. So after the two villains leave, Scrooge finishes off his shift, goes home, and tries to relax for a nice pleasant evening. Instead, his former best friend breaks into his house, he has his door double locked, and his spirit just walks in anyways, even though Scrooge clearly wants privacy, and tells him, hey, I'm gonna send my three buddies to come bother you in the middle of the night, which first of all, it's rude to interrupt somebody's sleep. Scrooge tries to use his words like a reasonable person, like we should be teaching our children to do. And when Jacob Marley says, you're gonna get haunted, Scrooge says, I think I'd rather not. I think that that's a very reasonable thing to say. And honestly, Scrooge is really, really bothered by this. It says right here, Marley's ghost bothered him exceedingly. Later on that night, Scrooge finally is able to fall asleep after such a traumatizing experience falls asleep, and then gets woken up in the middle of the night by another spirit. First of all, they yank his bed curtains aside, which, what if he sleeps naked? That's incredibly inappropriate. Not only that, but the ghost starts bringing him back to really traumatic memories that Scrooge clearly isn't ready to confront. I think that if you have a really traumatizing past, honestly, the safest thing to do would be to explore that with the help of a therapist or in a safe environment, not in the middle of the night in your dressing gown, 
flying with a ghost. But that's what the ghost does. He brings him back and stirs up all of these horrible memories. He goes back to Scrooge's old boarding school and Scrooge has to see himself alone on Christmas Day when his father didn't want to look at him and all of his friends left him. It says here, a lonely boy was reading near a feeble fire and Scrooge sat down upon a form and wept to see his poor forgotten self as he used to be. Obviously, these are feelings that Scrooge isn't ready to process and forcing somebody to confront feelings like that in an unprotected environment and without help of a specialist is really damaging and we'll get to how this will affect Scrooge's mental state in a little bit but just keep in mind that that's not okay. And then the spirit brings him to another day in the past where Scrooge's fiance dumps him. Like, come on, do you really have to remind him of that? That scene to me is really powerful because it demonstrates that Scrooge really is more fulfilled with money than with companionship. And they make that sound like it's such a dirty thing, but if that's what makes you happy and fulfilled and comfortable in your life, what the heck is wrong with that? He doesn't want to marry this woman anymore. Why does that make him a bad person? He found something else that he values more than what society told him he should want. I don't think that's a bad thing. This is why A Christmas Carol is really damaging to children and frankly anybody. What if the person is asexual or aromantic? Scrooge clearly isn't attracted to this woman, he clearly doesn't love her, and yet he seemed to be the villain because he has other goals aside from settling down with this woman and having a miserable life with her. And the woman even acknowledges this. She says, another idol has displaced me. And then Scrooge asks what other idol and she says, a golden one. This is the person that knows Scrooge the most. He's not close with his family. I think by this point, his sister has already died. I'm not positive on the timeline here, but this is his fiance. This is the one person he's genuinely close with. She knows him better than anyone else. And she knows he doesn't love her. He loves financial security. And that's completely fine. That is a thousand percent valid. And yet we're supposed to think that Scrooge is the bad guy for this. I think he would have been the bad guy if he would have married her anyway, and then they both would have been poor and miserable. He isn't capable of loving her. She would have been in a loveless relationship, which obviously isn't what she wanted, and he would have been poor, which isn't what he wanted. So I don't think that it should be villainized that he acts this way. He lets her break up with him, even though clearly it hurts him all these years later, because as he's watching this, he's getting really upset by it when the spirit is bringing him and airing out all his dirty laundry. And after this, he is just so upset, he even tells the spirit, Spirit, said Scrooge, show me no more, conduct me home, why do you delight to torture me? Even when the spirit says no, Scrooge says, no more, cried Scrooge, no more, I don't wish to see it, show me no more. He's being very clear, he's using his words, and this book is now just teaching children that it doesn't matter if you ask nicely, it doesn't matter if you use your words. And then the final thing that this spirit shows him before finally letting him go back home is the night that his best friend died. Not only that, he's showing his ex-fiance's new husband laughing at him for the fact that his best friend is currently dying. Belle, said the husband, turning to his wife with a smile, I saw an old friend of yours this afternoon. Who was it? Guess. How can I? I don't know, she asked in the same breath, laughing as he laughed. Mr. Scrooge? Mr. Scrooge it was. I passed his office window, and as it was not shut up and he had the candle inside, I could scarcely help seeing him. His partner lies upon the point of death, I hear, and he sat alone. Quite alone in the world, I do believe. How freaking rude is that? First of all, this guy's obviously an asshole. He's making fun of him because he's alone, because his best friend is literally dying. And also, the spirit is making Scrooge see that. He's bringing up the pain of his best friend's death and also showing his ex-fiance's new husband laughing at him for it. Like, holy cow, if that isn't bullying, what is? Let's fast forward a little bit to our next bully in this story, and that is the ghost of Christmas present. Again, wakes Scrooge up in the middle of the night, drags him out of his bed. This might actually be the worst thing that any villain has done in the history of villainy but they go to Bob Cratchit's house and see his happy little poor family and they see Tiny Tim who is a very, very sick child and it's, it's really sad. And Scrooge is touched by this because even his cold heart 
feels for a small injured child, and he asks the spirit, who by the way is supposed to be all-powerful, it's implied that he's God, and tons of magic. He asks the spirit what's going to happen to Tiny Tim, and the spirit says, I see a vacant seat, replied the ghost, in the poor chimney corner and a crutch without an owner, carefully preserved. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. Which, first of all, is heartbreaking. Not only does he just say, no, I'm sorry, he's gonna die. He really paints the picture of it, and it's really hard for Scrooge to hear something like that. But then that last line, if these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. The spirit is telling Scrooge, if you don't start liking Christmas and change who you are as a person, I'm gonna kill this child. Because remember, this spirit is all-powerful and he can change these things. Clearly, he can help a sick kid. And also, spoiler, we know that Tiny Tim does live in the end, so clearly it wasn't like he was a terminally ill child that had no hope. There was clearly a way he could have lived. And yet, the spirit decided, if Scrooge doesn't celebrate Christmas, I'm gonna kill this kid, I'm gonna let him die, and I'm gonna tell Scrooge that it's all his fault. Honestly, how screwed up is that? If a doctor went up to you with this tiny, critically ill baby in his arms and said, hey, do you like Mondays? And you say, no, I don't like Mondays, Mondays suck. And he said, okay, then I'm not gonna save this baby. Like, he would lose his medical license right away, that would be horrible, and that's essentially what this spirit is doing. Let's, let's just let that sink in for a moment, okay? <sighs> Moving on. After that, the spirit goes to the other people in Scrooge's life and shows Scrooge that they're talking bad about him behind his back. Like, that would hurt my feelings, right, Comet? Yeah. And finally, we get to the third spirit, the ghost of Christmas yet to come, who we all know is essentially the Grim Reaper. You brought the Grim Reaper to bully him? Really? Not only does this ghost not talk to him the whole time, which is rude, he brings him to these people that are essentially celebrating Scrooge's death. These next couple scenes are kind of confusing, so I'm going to explain them. Essentially, they try to say that Scrooge is a bad person because he's motivated by money. They think he's greedy, he's cold, because he values money as something that makes him happy, and he values it above his personal relationships, which he doesn't like. He says he likes to be alone, but whatever. So the moral of the story is that liking money is bad. However, the ghost of Christmas past brings Scrooge to a couple different places. He brings them to a pawn shop where these three people are trying to sell off these items that they stole from a man who has recently died. Not only did they steal everything out of his house, which I know he's dead, he doesn't need it anymore, but still, it's just really disrespectful. They take his bed curtains, they take the bed sheets, the dead body is still lying in the bed. They take the bed sheets off of the bed where the dead body is lying. Like, that's really messed up. And also, they're laughing about it the whole time. One woman even took the shirt that the body was wearing because she thought that it was a nice shirt and she could probably sell it to make a buck. How could Scrooge, who has an honest job, if you don't know, by the way, Scrooge's job is that he gives out loans and he is known to be unforgiving, we'll say. He doesn't make exceptions, but it's a legal contract they signed. They don't have to give exceptions. If they didn't want to borrow his money and listen to his terms, maybe they shouldn't have borrowed his money. But anyway, Scrooge makes an honest living and he works hard for his money and he's the bad guy. These people are stealing clothing off of dead bodies to attempt to sell it and they're not? We all know what happens after that. He eventually goes and sees the tombstone of the man that all these people are making fun of and realizes that it's him. Which, again, really, really rude and inconsiderate. First of all, you showed him all these people being so cold to this man and then to find out that it was him, aside from the shock of finding out that, you know, that's your tombstone, that's just really messed up. Right, Common? After this, Scrooge clearly has a mental breakdown. I mentioned earlier how traumatizing all this must be and that going through something like this without the help of a therapist can be really damaging and it turns out it was. Scrooge has some sort of mental break. It doesn't go into enough detail so I can't speculate on exactly what happens. Scrooge is in such a fragile mental state and in such a broken mindset that he can't even get himself dressed. 
His hands were busy with the garments all this time, turning them inside out, putting them on upside down, tearing them, mislaying them. Like, obviously, he is damaged. He is not okay. He doesn't know what day it is. He's confused. He's not in control of his thoughts. And this is the moment when he finally starts enjoying Christmas. Scrooge didn't learn a lesson. Scrooge had a mental breakdown and is now delusional and doesn't even know himself anymore. It's not like they sat him down and had a polite conversation with him and said, listen, we think you're kind of rude. Here's how we think you should change. Instead, they bully him, they traumatize him, and they cause him to have some sort of mental breakdown, and then that's the happy ending. He loses himself. He is not himself anymore. That's clearly something bad. Something is clearly wrong, and we're celebrating it. After this, it goes on to say that Scrooge started giving away his money more liberally and that he acted like every day was Christmas, which I think also implies that he is more damaged than we thought. He thinks that every single day is Christmas and he's in this weird time loop. He was so shattered by the bullying these ghosts gave him that he doesn't know what day it is and he just gets stuck. And I think that's scary, but we're glorifying it and I think that's just really damaging to children. In conclusion, A Christmas Carol should be banned because it is a story teaching children that if you don't like somebody or you disagree with them, you should bully them with the help of any supernatural spirits, put them in mental and physical danger until they change who they are as a person. It's telling them not to accept others that have different preferences. It's telling them not to have any dreams outside of what society tells you. Like Christmas, get married, blah blah blah. I think that that is very harmful message and this should not be an appropriate book for children or anybody. I hope that you learned a lesson and will see things differently. And if you ever meet somebody who doesn't like Christmas and wants to keep to themselves, I hope that you don't get their dead best friend to bully them into changing who they are as a person. In case you guys got this far and couldn't tell, I was only like 30% serious. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button to let me know and subscribe to stay up to date with the rest of my videos. I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday, usually reading or writing related. So I hope to see you guys next time, and until then, have a great day. Bye.